Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to your We Care Ministry support team. Today, we're excited, and we hope that you're excited to be back with us. Today's discussion is going to be on our prayer for you. So it's, it's not too late to share, to like, share, and follow, and tell someone to come on. Come on and join us, because we're getting ready to have a hard time in the Lord about our prayer. So come on and join us today. I have missed you all, and I hope you missed us. So come on, join us. We're ready. Yes, we are. We are ready. We're definitely ready. I am actually liking and sharing right now, so you can do the same and just share this prayer. We, each of us have picked out words that we're going to pray. Um, each uh, letter, I have the letter B, and Kimberly has the letter W, and Kim has the letter P. And so we're just going to pray over those letters and each word that the Lord has given us. And you're going to get an understanding. We're not just going to be praying. We're going to explain what each word means or what uh, scripture that goes with those words. Or we're just going to talk about those words and how important those words are in our lives as believers. And so we're going to just take this time to actually involve the word of God, prayer, faith, and you in this session. So we hope that you will join us and, and, and encourage us and, and pray for us and with us as we pray for and with you. And we just want you to be excited about what's going on. And We Care Ministry Support Team really care about prayer because we care about you. And so we just want to make sure that everything gets covered, not just on Thursday nights, because we only covered that for maybe 15 minutes. But the, today we're spending this session covering you in prayer in many areas, on many levels, for many reasons. And we hope that you find something that really will encourage you and bless you and your household. Amen. Thank you, Sister Vanessa and Sister Kim. Today is a good day. God is good. He's worthy to be praised. And we are going to encourage you today. We're going to encourage your heart and we're going to remind you who you are. We're going to tell you how God feels about you. We're going to tell you how great God is. We're going to give you something to carry yourself through the week. And today I am starting again my um, my letter for today is W. <laughs> so the first word I'm going to talk about is wonderfully. So I picked this word because a lot of people don't see themselves as wonderful. A lot of people don't see themselves as anything special. But I want to remind you that you are special to God and you were carefully and wonderfully made. And the word wonderful means, it means inspiring delight. Think about that. It's an inspiring delight. God made you wonderful and, and you are were inspired and it was his delight. It was his pleasure and it was extremely good and he thought you were marvelous in his sight i just bless yes. the lord i thank god because you know you are worthy um yes. uh, people don't think that they're worthy they have anything of value to offer but you are worthy and worthy means having uh, or showing the quality or abilities that merit recognition whatever god is doing in you deserves some some you are noteworthy and he yeah. made you a notable and important person because remember you are fearfully and wonderfully made you are made in the image and the likeness of god and you have value and you you are the sum of all of his love he poured it all down on the inside of yes. you and that makes you equivalent to being somebody so the next time Somebody tells you, oh, you ain't nobody. You ain't nothing. Tell them I am somebody <laughs> because Psalms 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee. This yeah. is you telling God, I will praise thee for I 
am fearfully and wonderfully made. And, and, and you talk, tell him that marvelous are the works of your hands. God, look at me. I, I can't even imagine how much it took for you to make me this great. And then you say, my soul knows, knoweth right well. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that I am somebody. And then verse uh, 14 says, for it was you who created my inward part. Everything yes. about me. All of my insides, you created them and you knitted them together. You created me and knitted me together in my mother's womb. Yes. And then you say, I, God, I am praising you, not somebody else. I'm not going to let a rock cry out for me. I yes. am going to praise you because I have been fearfully, meaning carefully, meaning respectfully or reverently made. You set yes. me apart to be somebody great. You set me apart to be somebody wonderful. And I just want you to know that today, if nobody tells you that you are wonderful, I'm telling you today that you yes. are wonderful and you were created with purpose and yes. that the Lord had you in mind <laughs> before you were in your mother's womb, that you are chosen. You are a chosen generation. You are yes. a royal priesthood. You are more than a conqueror. There is no one greater than you because no. you were made by the most high God. And I just want to encourage you on today. So I'm going to yes. pray for you today to let you know that you are wonderful and that yes. you remember what God did to make you as great as he did. So Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on today for who you have created us to be. We thank you, God, that we are made in the likeness and the image of you. And we repent now for every word that we have spoken that has been exalted against the knowledge of you that has said to me, whether we said it to ourselves or someone said it to us and we believe what they said that did not line up with what you said. We are fearfully and wonderfully made and we thank you that you put us together a little at a time and you made us just like you wanted to. And it is marvelous in our eyes. We thank you, oh God, that every thought that we have allowed to exalt itself against the knowledge of you, we cast it down. We recognize now that we are the workmanship of your hands. And we bless you, God, for all that you have done. We thank you that you're putting us back together every piece of us spiritually, physically, and emotionally, you are putting us back together and we are reminded and will remind ourselves that we are made fearfully, reverentially, and carefully by the most high God. We thank you, God, for what you're going to do today. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you are yet to do in us. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Be encouraged Amen. on today. Amen. Know who you are. Amen. Hallelujah. Know yes. that you are made by God. We bless the Lord on today. Amen. I'm done. I'm getting excited. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, my letter for today is P. And my first word is prayer. And prayer, the definition of prayer is communicating with God. An act of supplication, interceding, uh, directing to God how to talk to God, how to make your praise with God, crying out to God, uh, asking God for strength, asking God for guidance, asking God um, for healing, um, uh, how to lead you, your purpose, and your purpose of praying. There's lots of purpose in praying. Uh, you need to, prayer is also acknowledging God. Acknowledging God for who he is and what he is, first of all, before you begin to start praying, uttering words to God, you need to acknowledge him for who he is because he's the most high and we have to get to him to get anything. Um, also, supplication. This is um, this involves asking for something uh, earnestly, humbly, uh, pleasing with God, pleading with God. Uh, Holy surrendering, surrendering yourself unto God. Uh, thanksgiving, expressing gratitude for the food we have, the lights we have, the jobs we have, uh, the finances we have, uh, scripture warfare, 
Now, this is when you deal with the battles, when you're dealing with something that's going on with you or your family uh, or someone else, others. Um, it guards us against attacks, spiritual warfare. When we're praying about spiritual warfare, it, got, got, it guards us against in, your enemies, anything that's coming up against you. Um, it's uh, not just uh, being, don't think prayer is just being obedient with God. Because God, God answered our prayers. It is a great mercy that God has toward us when he answered our prayers. Not just us being obedient. We have to have also, God has his mercy for us. So today, I thank God. Also in Philippians 4, 6, and 7, it says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving, Present your request to God. Don't be anxious about getting these things that you want. Don't be anxious. I want a car. Don't be so anxious waiting on that car. But pray to God. Tell God what you want. He said, ask and it shall be given unto thee. Ask him. But don't be anxious about it. Know that God is going to give it to you in his timing. Also in verse 7 it says, And the peace of God which transcends all understanding will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. So when we pray to God, we have to just wait. Wait on his answers. God is going to do it in his timing. We be so anxious and we get so upset. Oh, I'm so mad. God ain't done nothing for me yet. And then you, you fall off. Trust God. You have to trust God and knowing your back. And you don't just pray. You wake up with this prayer in your heart. You wake up thanking God first. You yes. wake up praying to God. Before you ask for anything, thank you, thank you, God, yes. for allowing me this day. So now I'm going to go ahead and pray for us for the word prayer. Father God, I thank you for this day. I thank you for allowing me the breath of air in my body, God. I thank you for the breath of air in all of our bodies, God. God, I thank you for health. I thank you for strength. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your mercy, God. I thank you for being this God all by yourself, God. God, I love you. I adore you, God. God, you heard our prayers, God. We have prayed so many times on this prayer line, God. We pray daily, God, and we know that you've heard our prayers, God. We know that you've heard the prayers of your people, God. God, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do, Father God, what you've already done, Father God, and what you're going to bring to us, God. God, we thank you, God. We thank you for everyone that got on this prayer, on this, on Zoom today, on my own Facebook today to hear from us today about prayer, God. How we love you, we adore you, and we magnify you. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, my letter is B, and my first word is believe. And before you can believe, you have to be. You have to be. And so, because we are. We have to know that we came from somewhere and we came from somebody. And so before we were, he was, and he is forevermore. So we believe everything that the word tells us about our God, because he is good. He is great. He is awesome. He is mighty. He is honorable. He is just, he is forgiving. He is merciful and graceful and full of kindness and most of all he's full of love yeah. and we thank god for being <laughs> we are supposed to be holy as he is holy we are supposed to be in the word and be in his will and when we are being who we're supposed to be we can believe the fact that everything that he has promised will come to pass so my word is believe in my first scripture is uh, Hebrews 11 and 6, and it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. Who is him? God. We must have faith. We have to believe in not just in a word. We have to believe in the word. We have to yes. believe in the word of God. So without faith, it's impossible to please him for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder, a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So if we believe that he is, we believe that he exists, we believe that he loves us, we believe that he cares, we believe, if we believe, that's half the battle right there. 
believing, having faith and believing in this God who loves us beyond measure, that he gave his only begotten son, that he yes. gave us a second, third, a hundred time Thank chance you. over and over and over and over and over again. He believes in us so much that he continues to give us, give us grace. He continues to have mercy upon us. He continues to give us life. He continues to give us health and strength because he believes in us. But yes. then we have to also believe in him and believe in his word. And we have to diligently seek him. And then also the scripture tells us in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he loved the world. Not just me, not just the Kims. He loved the world. <laughs> he gave his only begotten son, his only son. The only son God had, he gave to us that we may also have that whosoever believes in him whosoever should believe will not perish but will have everlasting life so if you truly believe and you have to believe by faith that's the only way you can believe if you're looking for a sign at every turn if you're looking for some great wonders at every turn look out your window look out your window and see the sky <laughs> look out your window and look at the trees those are signs that he exists uh, take a deep breath that's a sign that he exists. Because you exist, he exists. And because he exists, we exist. So that's a sign. If you're looking for signs, look at those creatures in the ocean. Whenever you watch uh, uh, National Geographic, the ones that light up underneath the water, you know there has to be a God. Come on, look at all those different stripes on, on all these different animals and these different creatures and they all are different in some shape, form of fashion. And, and it's just amazing that, you know, even in the cat family, we see lions and leopards and tigers and all this stuff and all of them are different. Mm -hmm. And he made you different on purpose. We don't have the same fingerprint. We don't have the exact same DNA. So just think about that. For you to know and know that you exist and all these other wonderful things exist, you have to know that there's a great creator that exists as well. You have to believe. And in believing, we can get our prayers answered. In believing, we know that the word of God is true. So if you say, well, I'm not sure what I believe. Well, guess what? Whether you believe or not, God loves you. Whether you believe or not, Jesus died for you. Yes. Whether you believe or not, the world is still spinning on its axis and it hadn't fallen off. The stars have not come down out of the sky because you did not believe. The sun still rose, whether you believe or not, and the moon will come out tonight with or without you on earth. So you must believe that life was before you, life is now, and life will be after you're gone because you, your belief does not change God. But I'm praying that the Holy Spirit of God will change your belief. So in believing, hallelujah, thank God. <laughs> I thank God for the faith to believe. Because guess what? He even gave us that. So everything we get, we get from God. Yeah. So you can't tell me God doesn't exist until you're able to make your own air by hand. <laughs> until you're able <laughs> to make your heart beat at night while you're asleep then you'll give me something else to believe in. But since you have not, cannot, and will never do that, I will never believe that God does not exist. So I'm telling you that there is a holy God, a great God, an awesome God that is worth you believing in him because he is. And Father, we thank you right now for everyone that truly believes. And we ask that you touch those that have problems with believing. And we ask that you help, just like in the Bible, Jesus, you help those with unbelief. And even, there are some, even Christians, there, there are some aspects of their lives and some aspects of the Bible that they do not understand. And there are some things that we may not have clear right now, but give us the faith to believe. And Father, we ask that even in our believing that we're able to draw closer to you so that you can draw closer to us. Even in our believing, Lord, we have faith 
faith to believe that you are. We have faith to believe that you are the great I am. You have, we have faith to believe mm -hmm. that you are omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent. We have faith to believe that you are everything that we will have ever have need of. We have faith to believe that not only are you with us, not only do you see us, not only do you empower us, but you love us with this great and unconditional love. We thank you, oh God. We praise your holy name because you are God that believes in his creation, that you continually give us grace and mercy to get through each day. And you continually restore our health and heal our wounds. And you continually forgive us for our sins and transgressions and trespasses. Lord, we thank you so much for believing in us. And we praise your holy name that you allowed us to get to know you through your son. And yes. through your son, we were able to see an example of the father here on earth. We experience love here on yes. earth. We experience yes. kindness here on earth. We experience grace and mercy here on earth. We are able to be Christ-like because we had an example through Christ that showed us how the father really is. And we thank you. We thank you for fathering and fathering us all those times that we needed a parent. We thank you for being a friend. We thank you for being a counselor. We thank you for being a peace and a comfort in times of trials and turmoil. Father, we thank you so much for believing in us. And we thank you for giving us faith to continue to believe. We thank you for answering our prayer in Jesus. Amen. 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 So we have made our journey full circle and I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> I am back and we're going from wisdom, uh, from wonderfully to wisdom. And the next word is wisdom. And as I was uh, listening to uh, uh, the, the last two panelists, I thought about my word a little bit more. And wonderful says that you won before it said anything else. You won and you are full. And that's what it said. You won and you are full and you are full of God's grace and mercy and you are full of his wisdom. Amen. Yeah. Cause that's my next word. And, yes. <laughs> and it is a uh, wisdom is a quality of having an experience, having knowledge and good judgment. It is being wise and sound of, in your actions and the decisions that you, re, you make uh, in regard to, the experiences that you face and the knowledge and, and having good judgment. That's what wisdom is, is having the knowledge and knowing how to use it, applying yes. it at the right time in the right places. That's what wisdom is. And I wanted to talk to you about wisdom on today because so many people are just doing whatever they feel like doing. They don't give any thought to it. They just making decisions, flying by the seat of their pants, just yes. being spontaneous and free flowing and just doing whatever, right? But is that wise? Mm. <laughs> it's not wise. When we're spending our money and we know that our ends can't meet the end, <laughs> is that wise? When we know that we're going to write a check and hope that it it that our paycheck hit the bank before the check due is that wise? <laughs> mm. Those are not wise decisions. Not it, wise. it and we have to be wise in every area of our lives. Yes. And James one and five says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask God. Yes, who is the the ultimate God of wisdom? He who gives generously, meaning he will give you wisdom generously and without reproach and he will give it to you because you ask and that's what the word of god says not what kim says or kimberly says <laughs> but <laughs> it is what the word of god says and then in james 3 and 17 it says but wisdom from above is first pure yes. then peaceable Yes. gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And I thought about that. I said, my, my, my. First, wisdom is pure, meaning it's not anything contaminating it. Right. It's just what it is. <laughs> Either you have it or you don't. 
It can't be no, I'm a little bit wise or I'm half wise. No, either you're wise or you're not. And then it says it's peaceable because wisdom teaches us how to be at peace with people. It teaches us how to walk in peace, how to pursue peace. It tells us to run peace down because when we're not wise, we are totally in chaos. And then it says it's gentle. Wisdom is not pushy. Wisdom don't make you do what I want you to do because I think I know better. That's not wise. The word mm -hmm. of God says he who wins souls is wise. And we win souls by getting them to understand from our point of view because it's open to wisdom. I mean, open to re reason. So when we reason, even God is saying, come, let us reason together. Yeah. He's willing to have a conversation with us. So if God is willing to have a conversation with us, then we should be willing to have a conversation with other people. And then wisdom is full of mercy. When we think about mercy, it is giving people pardons or uh, accepting their faults. They may not deserve it. That's what it's saying. <laughs> I'm going to give you something that you don't quite deserve. And that's what wisdom does. And then it said it's good, full of good fruit. Good fruit uh, is uh, the works that you do. It shows wisdom has a, uh, it has substance. It's not just something that's not, not, you can say, oh, well, I have wisdom, but there's no fruit. There's no works. There's no, no nothing. Wisdom has substance and wisdom is in part is impartial. So, you know, people used to say, I'm going to be Switzerland on this. I'm going to be Switzerland on this because Switzerland don't take sides. <laughs> wisdom don't take sides. It's on the side of right. Yes. And wisdom is always on the side of right. And it is sincere. So you can't say, I'm just giving you something and on the, in, the, in your heart, you're really saying, I hope they fail. I'm going to give you some mm. wisdom, but I, in your heart, you're saying, I hope it don't work. That's mm. not real wisdom. That's, that's an ulterior motive. So mm. we want wisdom uh, to, to prevail in our lives. And sometimes it takes trusting God with that. So we can get instruction from God, but then it don't always seem right, right? It, it, it don't feel right because it's something that's not normal for us. It's out of the norm. So we have to, in those instances, we have to trust in the Lord with all that we have in the word of God in Proverbs 19 and 20 says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart and do not lean to your own understanding. So if I am being wise, it may not feel good. It may not feel right, but it is right. So I just can't trust how I feel. I have to trust the Lord. And then wisdom listens to advice and accepts godly instruction. And when you do that, you gain even more wisdom and you have a future. So I just want to tell you that God is always there to give you what you need. Yes. If you need wisdom, he's there to give it to you. And the last scripture I want to say, tell you is Proverbs 4 and 7. And it says the beginning of wisdom is this get wisdom and whatever you do get insight or get understanding get some knowledge go read about it get some some get some godly counsel ask people who's been through it because they may be able to tell you something that you did not know and the fear of the lord is the beginning of real wisdom honoring god trusting god giving God his respect and reverence, that's real wisdom because we know that in him, we live and have our being and everything that we need, he's already provided. So we have to trust in the Lord. And I wanna just, just tell you that if you don't, if you're facing a situation and you don't know what you wanna do, if you're facing circumstances that are seeming un insurmountable and you don't know how you're gonna make it out of this, ask the Lord for wisdom. Yes. He will give it to you. And then you will become that one. You will win. You will be a winner because on the wonderful, you will be wonderful. You will win and you will be full of wisdom in the name of Jesus. So we're going to pray and we're going to ask God for wisdom. 
And we're going to uh, move on to Sister Kim for her next word. Amen. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we want to ask you to intervene in our lives, intervene in our decisions, intervene in our every area of our lives so that we can gain instruction. We can gain wisdom. We can gain knowledge and understanding. We're asking you now to enlighten our understanding so that we will know more about you, that we will seek you even the more that we will trust you more and not try to figure it out, not try to understand it on in our own uh, self, but we will put it all back on you because you said that you would give us the wisdom that we need and that you will not hold back. You will not uh, chastise us for asking, but you would give it to us without measure. So we thank you, God, that even now, you are pouring your wisdom down on the inside of us and that we are gaining more wisdom, knowledge, and understanding yeah. that we had just a moment ago because it's by faith that we receive it and we know that you're already doing it. We yeah. thank you that on the decisions that we made where we did not include you and things didn't go right, God, we're asking you to forgive us now. And we asking you to turn it around and give us wisdom and knowledge on how to get out of it, to fix it and cause it to work out for our good. Yeah. We know that it is not an easy thing for us to live in this world. And we have so many things that are facing us, but we have you on our side and you will fight for us. We thank you for going before us and making every crooked way straight. We're thanking you now for going before us and making every rough place smooth. We thank you, God, that you are causing everything to line up because we are making a choice on today to put you first and to ask of you what we need and to, and to glean from your knowledge and your understanding and to follow your instruction and to gain insight. We thank you now, God, for lighting up the pathway because your word Oh God is a light unto our feet and a yeah. lamp unto our pathway. And now we can see clearly, hallelujah. We see God clearly where you want to take us. And yeah. we bless you that you're taking us by our hand and we're yeah. walking by faith and not by sight. We don't have to always understand, but we understand one thing. And that is that you love us and that you care for us and that you are going to take us where we need to be. We yeah. bless your name on today. And it's in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Sister Amen. Kim, what you got for us? What you got? <laughs> Thank you, Sister Kimberly. My next word is prosperity. Okay. God wants us to prosper. He don't want any of us to be poor, not to have. He wants us to prosper and be prosper is seeking God in everything, seek, seeking righteousness, keeping his commandments, walking his way, honoring God with his wealth, developing your faith, trust in God. Truth prosperity is about living a life of fully engaged with the principles led out of God. In John, in John, a third John 1 and 2, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper in health, even as thy soul prosper. He wants us to prosper even in health and as our souls prosper. Like I said, he don't want any of us to be out here being homeless. He has it for us. All we have to do is go to God for it. Yes. Um, this, and another thing, you have to have discipline. And discipline mm -hmm. is hard. Mm -hmm. This discipline is just not given to us. And sometimes it's unpleasant. So we have to have discipline, but it's rewarding in the end. Yes. It's rewarding in the end. It gives a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. So God wants us to prosper. He, uh, it says in Philippians 4 and 19, but my God to supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. God will yeah. supply all of our needs, all of them. We just yeah. have to surrender unto him and trust him and believe that he's going to do it. He don't, he don't leave with all of us to prosper in good health, yes. good wealth. He has it. It's there yeah. for us. He said he'll give it to us yes. in his time. Again, about his timing so yeah. i definitely trust god when it comes to prosperity yeah. we have done that we, 
here lately when this uh, COVID hit, we thought that we were just lost. There were so many people out there just lost. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? God hadn't left us. He had not left us. He was waiting on us to get it together. He's waiting on us to get it together because he wants us to prosper. I thank God for yeah. even when I didn't know what I was going to do, when I didn't have, I kept thinking about it. I thank you. I thank you because you said you want us to prosper. And I know you're going to give us what we stand in need of. Yeah. They're running to the store and all of these things. Now you get, now you you can't, you don't have room to put anything because you have all this stuff because you wasn't even trusting God. You wasn't mm -hmm. trusting God that God was going to give you what you're standing still in need of. You were just mm -hmm. running from pillar to post trying to get all of this stuff. But God said he's going to give it to us. He wants us to prosper. But we have to go through some things. Like I said, it's not mm -hmm. easy. It is, you have to, um, it's not hard. Sometimes you have to go through some unpleasant things in order to get the reward. I remember when I was um, still out there partying and I was, I would come home and I would be praying God, I'd be in church and I'll just be, oh God, you told me you want me to prosper. And then I'm sitting at church thinking, oh, what am I put on to go out to the club tonight after I leave, this, leave church? And, I, and I'm thinking God is going to give me what I want. And I'm still out there in the world doing the things that he has to do. No, Kim, you're going to have to sit down and do what I say. And like I said, it's not pleasant. It's not you. Even when God said He's going to give us, we have to do what He says do. It's steps that you have to take to get get that uh, wealth that God has for you. Sometimes you have to go. It's a slow pace. It's a slow pace. You have to. You know, we work, and sometimes uh, what well, we make that pay our bills. But God said He wants us to prosper. He's going to give us. He's going to continue to give us no matter what we have to surrender ourselves unto God and trust him and believe that he's going to make us wealthy. We're not saying we're going to be billionaires and millionaires. I say it every day. I'm a millionaire mm -hmm. and I believe it. And I trust Amen. God that one day I will be that millionaire. I, sometimes I'm like, oh, I only got this much and that much. But thank God I'm still rich. I'm rich. Yes. I'm not broke. And you say, I'm so broke. I'm not broke. Amen. With God, I'm not broke. And we will prosper. Yeah. So today, I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, God, because you said you wish among all things that we prosper in good health, God. And mm -hmm. God, we thank you. Not in good, just good health, Father God. We know that you're going to do what you said you're going to do. Yeah. So God, we thank you that we're all the head and not the tail, Father God. We are the above and not beneath, God. We are the lender and not the borrower, God, because you said it, God. And we yeah. trust you, God. We trust yeah. you with everything that we have, God. And we believe it. So God, we step out on faith, God, believing in your word, because your word yes. does not lie, God. You're not a man that shall lie, God. And we believe in it, God. I continue to help us to prosper. Continue to not let what you say fall on deaf ears, God. And we just go in this word, this world, worrying, worrying about where we're gonna get our next things from God. Because you don't want us to worry, God. You don't want us to be weary, God. We are wonderfully made and we believe in you, God. And we trust in you, God. We trust in every word that each one of these ladies have given to us, God, today. And we believe it, God. God, help us to know that we're going to prosper on your word. And we yes. trust and believe it. In yes. Jesus' name I pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, my word is because I have bees and we've done believe and we know that we believe in God and we know that God believes in us. Yeah. Now that we believe, we need to bless him. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. We're going to bless <laughs> the Lord. Bless the Lord. And Psalm 103 says, bless <laughs> the Lord, all my soul and all that is within me. <laughs> bless his holy name. Yes. Bless the Lord. Have you ever given God everything that's inside of you? Now, you know, when you're weary and you're hurting and you're crying, you cry with everything inside of you and it comes out and you feel so much better after you had a really good cry. You feel so much better. Like when, even when you're feeling nauseous, you feel so much better when you're, when that's over with, 
when the process has completed, you know, there's no more rumbling in your stomach and whatever process your body has to go through to get it out, it comes out and you feel better. Well, yeah. blessing the Lord is just the same. <laughs> there is a bubbling and overwhelming feeling of praise and of adoration. And you just feel like you're so excited. You're about to explode. That's when all that is within you can bless his holy name. Yeah. That's when you giving God your all, where it's just, I cannot contain it. I cannot hold it. I cannot just keep my mouth shut. I can't keep my legs still. <laughs> See, I get excited. So then my hands start moving, my head moves and, you know, because I'm willing to bless the Lord with all that's within me. With everything he has given me, my eyes get brighter. My smile gets wider. I'm excited because I love to bless the Lord. My soul makes its boast in the Lord. I'm able to magnify the Lord because of what's inside of me. And I pray that you understand how important it is to bless the Lord. You say, well, how do you bless the Lord? He's the one that gives us blessings. He's the one that takes care of us. We bless him by obeying him. Yes. We bless him by saying yes to his will. We bless him by walking out his plan. We bless him by helping others. We bless him by doing what his word tell us to do. When we bless the Lord, we are not just opening our mouths. We're opening our hands. We're opening our, our minds to the word. We're walking in the steps that he's ordained for us. We are doing his will. We are doing his work. I, we're doing for him what is necessary. And that's what we do. And he is blessed by it. He is pleased by it. He is honored by you blessing him. So it says, David was saying this. He said, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. <laughs> He's telling his soul to bless. Sometimes you have to do that even when you don't feel good. Sometimes mm -hmm. even when you're going through and there's trial after trial and, and circumstance after circumstance and problem after problem, sometimes you have to tell your soul, listen, soul, we yes. don't praise the Lord. We're <laughs> going to bless the Lord. You remember that old Sunshine Band song? You know, you have to tell your hands, you have to tell your feet to yes. praise the Lord. And this is what we do. And we bless him when we praise him. We bless him when we call on him. We bless him when we trust him. We bless him when we have faith in him. We bless him when we walk in love like he does. And so we want to be an honorable blessing to the Lord. So with all that is within us, you should be blessing and praising the Lord. And he should not get a half-hearted praise or a little really? bit of praise or uh, a, a, and then you give everybody else your all. Give God everything that's within you. And then it says, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Okay, I don't know one person that's alive that can say God never benefited me. There's nothing God did for me. A benefit is something good. And if there's anything good that has happened to your life, believe me, it came from God. Yes. It came from God. Because every good and perfect gift comes from God. He is the father of lights. He's the one that put the stars in the sky. He's the one that put the sun in the sky, the moon. And so that's why he's called the father of lights. Because anything that lights up this world, he is the father of. And guess who else he's the father of? He's the father of Jesus, the light of the world. He Amen. is the light that's within us. And so everything, so he's the father of light. So everything that has a light, he's the father of. He created that light so we can be the light in the midst of darkness. That's a benefit. And so then he not only, I'm all excited, hallelujah. I didn't know all this was going to come, but praise the Lord, bless the Lord. <laughs> And forget not all his benefits and who forgives all of our iniquities, all of our sins, all of our transgressions, all of our trespass. He forgives them all. That's a benefit right there. So if you don't have anything else to be grateful or thankful for, God is not holding your past against you. If you truly repented and asked for forgiveness, it's gone. And then he heals all of our diseases, not just one, not just two, whatever. If you got five, he can heal all five. Yes. If you had some in the past, it was him who healed it. If you're healed now, it was him who did it. And so he is the one who deserves our praise. And then it says, who redeems our life from the pit. We were going to the pit without Jesus. 
We yes. were going to the pit without understanding who Christ was and receiving him as our savior. He redeemed our lives from the pit. And then he crowns us with steadfast love. He crowns us with love and mercy. So then we have a crown of love and mercy on our head. So we bless him and he crowns us. <laughs> who does that? Oh. Who does that? <laughs> Only a good God, a good father, someone who deserves our praise. And then he satisfies us with good so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Oh my goodness. So when, you know, you feel better when you're healed. You feel better when you're forgiven. You feel better when you have benefits. Come on. You feel better when you know you've been redeemed. And then you're walking around with the crown of, of love and mercy on your head. And he's satisfied. You feel young. <laughs> and then your youth is renewed like me. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. So when you hear people blessing the Lord, God is pleased. When you hear people praising the Lord, God is pleased. So then in, in what, what I love is then even it says in Ephesians 1 and 3 that blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. So you, God loves that word all. You know why? Because omni means all. And he's all sufficient. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. So the word omni means all. So when God talks and you can read scriptures and it has the word A-L-L, -L, that's because God is all. He's all <laughs> that. He's the only one that's all that. And so when you want to use all, you think about God because he is all in all. He is <laughs> everything we need. Yes, and I is. thank him for it. So yes, Father, I bless you because yes. we come together to bless you. We bless your heart holy name. Your name is worthy to be praised. Your name yes. is mighty. Your name yes, is great. God. Your name is awesome. Your name is esteemed. Your name is extolled upon our lives and in our words. And we thank you. We're able to open our mouths wide and say, we bless your holy name. Blessed be the name of the Lord almighty. We praise you for all oh, the Lord. blessings that you have given unto us. And we want to bless you back with our lives. Lord, we want to bless you back with our words. We want to bless you back with the works of our hands. We want to bless you back with our finances. We want to bless you back with going the places you tell us to go. Yes, God. And we also want to bless you back in our thoughts and even in our hearts and even in our souls. We want to bless you with all yes, that is within us. And we thank you for blessing thank us to be God. a blessing until yes. every family, everyone on this earth is blessed by your name. They're blessed by your love. They're blessed by your goodness and they're blessed by your mercy. They're blessed by your healing. They're blessed by your kindness. They're yes, blessed God. by you because you are a blessed God. And we thank you and we praise you thank and we you give you all the glory God. in Jesus name. Amen. 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 See, I thought I was the only one excited today, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> so we have gone through a list. Now we are at the final word for me and my word today is whole. And I was thinking about the, the, the pool, the man at the pool of Bethesda, when he said, I don't have anybody to put me in when the water is troubled. And he didn't even understand that he didn't even need the water because he was standing right next to the one that had the living waters and he would never have to thirst again. But Jesus didn't even rebuke him. He just said, would you, you want to be made whole? Do you want to be well? <laughs> and, and, and the man said, but I don't have nobody. I don't have nobody. And a lot of times we feel like we don't have anybody. I don't, I don't have, all the blessings have been passed out. And you know, we used to sing that song, do not pass me by. Mm -hmm. <laughs> don't, don't pass me by. Savior, don't pass me by. Well, he is not passing you by today. Yeah. He mm -hmm. has made a personal stop to let you know that you too can be made whole. And I was looking at the, that word. It means to all of, like Vanessa got through just talking about all, all, all of, entire, in an unbroken or undamaged state, in one piece, yeah. a thing that is complete in yeah. itself, all oh, wow. of something, 
whole of something. And, and there is a difference between being healed and being made whole. Yeah. It, 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 the healing makes you well. It, it will stop the disease, but only wholeness can move you forward, fully repaired and rebuilt. And God wants to fully repair and rebuild us. He don't want us to just be made free of a symptom because that's what healing does. It frees us from a symptom. It doesn't free us from being um, for that symptom coming back. And, and, and in John 5 and 6, it says, when Jesus saw the man lying there, he knew that he had been there in that state for a long time. And he said to him, will thou be made whole? And that's my question to you today. Will you be made whole without the excuses, yeah. without the, 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 I need help without the Jesus knows that you need the help. He knows what state you're in. He understands that the, that, that scripture said he knew he saw him laying there and he knew so there is nothing that God does not know about you. He knows where you are. He knows how long you've been there. That man had been in that state for 38 years. Yes. Can you imagine being wanting somebody to help you for 38 years? Mm -hmm. I don't care if it's 38 years, 38 months, 38 minutes, 38 seconds. Jesus is here to make us whole. And he is not asking any questions except one wilt thou be made whole and and healing change your physical state but when you're being made whole it changes your spiritual state and healing can change your outer appearance but being made whole change your inner condition it is a different kind of thing when jesus comes in he does something totally opposite of what you expect Healing may cleanse your body, but being whole cleanses your heart and your soul. Yeah. Healing deals with the with you existing, but being whole deals with you living. And healing can deal with the receiving, but being made whole deals with you giving, caring, and sharing. It's all about you, God giving me for me to give somebody else. It's not about me being whole just to be whole. I wanna be whole so that I can act better, so that I can become better, so that I can be a better friend, yeah. so that I can help relieve other people's pain, so that I can uh, share the tears of someone else or even comfort them in their sorrow. It has to, when we are a whole person, it is more than just my symptoms are gone, but I am free, I am liberated, and I can do more because God expects more. To whom much is given, much is required. And when we are made whole, we don't get made whole just so we can set up and say, I'm whole. You are made whole so that you can help someone else because yeah. somebody needs you. When we sit and do nothing, we are holding somebody's blessing in our hands because we're sitting here feeling sorry for ourselves. But God said, get up, take your bed and walk. Mm -hmm. It is time to get up. It's time to shake yourself, oh, captive daughters and men of Zion, and walk in your purpose because God has something for you on today. And he Amen. wants you to be made whole in your mind. If your mind is not where it should be, if it's running to and fro, if you're stressed out, now is the time for you to say, I receive my wholeness from you today, God. I receive my healing, not only my healing, but I want you to make me whole. Make me a complete person on today and God is here to do that just for you and we're going to pray that God will heal in every area of our lives so Father God we thank you on today hallelujah 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 we thank you for being a God of completion that you are all powerful all present all knowing you know everything just like Jesus knew that man at the pool of Bethesda he knew how long he had been there you know us in our circumstances you know how long we've been in our situations but you come today that we might be changed that we might be different you're asking the question in our hearts and we feel the question do we want to be made whole we believe oh God that you can make a difference we believe God 
that you come to make a change and we are receiving our change on today. We don't want to walk away the same as we were yesterday. We don't want to walk away the same before we heard on today's prayer. We want to be made whole. Hallelujah. And we thank you, God, for making us whole today. We receive a wholeness. Our com we're complete. We're entire, lacking nothing. And we thank you, God, that you have supplied every need, psychological, physical, and emotional. We are no longer broken, but we are made whole and in one piece. And we thank you today, God, for what thank you're God. doing in our lives. We thank God. you that you have thank begun God. a good work in us and you alone are completing it until the day of Jesus Christ. We thank you that we can give it all to you and we're casting all of our cares upon you because you care for us. We glorify you today. Hallelujah. And we do bless you, God. Our yes. soul does make our boast in you. We know that the humble is hearing it and they are glad. Why? Because we are glad. We thank you today, God. And it's in thank Jesus' you. name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are done for today Hallelujah. and we thank you for joining us. We are excited about our God. We are excited about you joining us. We are excited about who God is, what he is Hello. doing, what he has done and what he's going to do in your life. Yes. We thank you so much for joining us this evening. We know you could have been doing so much more and, and you've taken time to join us and we've taken time to pray for you. We pray yes. that you receive something that will bless you and that will edify and encourage you and take you to your next level in Christ. And Sister Kim is going to close us out this evening. But until then, I just wanted you to remember and be reminded that you are not alone, you are love, God is real, that we should believe, we should pray, and that we're made whole in yes. every way. God bless you. Sister Kim Burley. <laughs> All right. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> we want to thank you for joining us today for our day of prayer. And we are praying for you. We are praying for you. We want you to be encouraged because we want to help to navigate you through whatever season you may be in. And we look forward to serving you again on our next discussion, which will be on the 26th of June. And it is a discussion on foster care. And we will be make, having a new discussion every second and fourth Saturday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. And We Care Ministries is here to help you navigate through any situation. So if you've lost someone, if you just need somebody to talk to, if you need special prayer, we're here for you. So if you would just send your name in through the e uh, uh, email us, instant message us, call us, whatever you need to do. Um, if you're looking at one of the uh, old sessions, you can put it in the comments because we do go back and check those before we do our prayer just to make sure that we're not leaving anybody out. And you can email us at wecare.ministry at att.net. And also, if you would just like to go back and look at something, some a discussion that has been had in the past, you can go back, go to our YouTube channel and just type in We Care Ministry Support Team, and you will be able to pull up one of the old discussions. And we are praying for you, your loved ones, and your friends, and your family, and your coworkers, and your whoever. We pray for everybody on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. So again, don't forget to submit your prayer request and don't forget to like, follow and share and follow us on Facebook. And remember that We Care Ministry Support Team is here. Helping you to navigate through. So tell your family and your friends <laughs> and your loved ones about We Care Ministry Support Team. Until next time, be blessed and we love you. Have a great evening and know that we care. God bless you. Have a God good day. See, see you next time. <laughs>